Johnson, and in today's video, what we're gonna talk about is the block leg in the throw. One of the keys to setting up a monster finish is hitting that block sequence all at the right time to do big things, and we're gonna talk about it in this video, so let's check it out. It's Eric Johnson. In today's YouTube video, what we're going to talk about is the block leg for the discus. One of the key things that we want to understand are some of the core positions. Now, in our system, we refer to when we get to the point of delivery and as we're setting up the power position, this becomes the pillar five. And what we want to see is when that block foot comes down into the position, we want to see that block foot coming down flat. And again, the way we teach, everything we teach in the throwing chain reaction system is designed to teach reversing throwers. We find that the non-reverse is clearly a very effective, great style, and there's been some just amazing throwers in history. Lars Riedel, Robert Harding, Sandra Perkovich, you look at Nadine Mueller, I mean, on and on and on, you took a look at the number of massively successful elite world throwers, but the difference between the block foot in the reverse and the non-reverse is different. In this video, we're gonna talk about it for the reverse. Now, the reason we focus on and what we teach in throwing chain reaction is the reverse is because the majority of athletes we coach, statistically, we're not seeing six plus foot tall girls, six, four plus guys. So one of the things is we find that for most athletes that where you're gonna see six, four, even six, five, but even you look at somebody like Christoph Harding who won the gold medal in Rio in 2016, he's six, 10, and he reversed, whereas his brother was a non-reverser. Both have an Olympic gold. Robert has more worlds and everything else and more consistent, huge throws. Point being is that if you're not a super tall athlete, we are big fans and we, we coach reverse and we think ultimately you will throw further and you you gotta learn to do it right. So one of the things is we wanna focus on the correct mechanics of that pillar five, six, right? And notice when I go from five, so we get into touch the beginning of five, end of five, and what we're gonna be doing is maintaining our position and acceleration of the delivery leg, pushing that knee and hip, and notice when I've done all of that, my block foot is down. When you see a thrower coming out of the back of the circle and they're landing, boom, you're gonna notice that foot and you're gonna notice that foot stay down all the way through delivery. You're gonna notice that that helps engage that block leg and you create that massive stopping motion on the left side and then you're going to be pulling and driving the delivery side out. One of the things we're gonna do is as that foot comes down, we have a simple drill in our program called the up-down drill. And so we go basically the delivery leg up, the block leg down, and you wanna feel this. And so we, what we do is go heel up and push and block leg down, and we feel that, and that creates the stopping motion. So when you look at it from this point, it looks here. But the key thing is, is you want that block leg down. Now, why do we not have it open? If you're gonna notice all the best throwers in the world, not only is the foot flat and the weight is on the inside of the foot, a flat foot, what you wanna see is that, that they try to maintain it down as long as they can, because when you're reversing thrower and you put it down here, you drive and you'll lift that toe up out of the way through the finish, through the reverse. So when you're a non-reverser, that foot's gonna be pointed more straight, and so the hip is gonna come through and you need the foot to be straight because you're not planning on driving your delivery side through. If we are doing a reverse and we push here, it's gonna pull me forward too much and it's gonna typically result in a late block and a foul and the hips rotating. Now, here's a couple of key things that you really wanna avoid. One, we don't wanna stay up on the toe because when you try to block, you're gonna notice that as I turn, the block foot's turning and remember what gives you a dynamic, massive, big finish is to have that foot down, hit the block and drive into that fully blocked engaged leg. When you're up on the toe and you turn, the hips are gonna turn, so now you're actually, both sides are moving. What a reversing thrower does is smash it down and then the right side accelerates all the way through. The key is, so we're clear, we open the foot, we put the foot down, we talk about on the inside of the foot, keeping it flat so we can engage that block, and that's actually gonna help acceleration. Remember, acceleration through the finish is key, and transfer of momentum. When we hit that block side and everything stops here, and that discus slaps and just accelerates through, and the whole delivery side, notice my hips are facing this way, 
that pulls and you see that big whip and that's that monster finish that everybody loves and wants. One of the big reasons that happens is of a proper block. If you're a thrower who's opening the shoulder too early, right? We do have to open the shoulder and there's a correct path in which the shoulder has to open. But if we're opening too early, you're gonna see that's gonna pull me off my leg versus opening out and then hitting here so everything's gonna go this way. And we'll talk about the block arm in another video. One of the things we wanted to make sure was clear today, we wanted to just talk about the block leg itself. We wanna get that foot down, we wanna engage the quad muscles, the hip, the glute, the hammies, so everything's gonna hit here and you hit that big aggressive block. Would you notice when I hit that and it comes down and it hits hard, it's gonna help with the acceleration of the delivery side into the throw. And again, that's what creates this big motion, that big block and now you see everything coming out this way and this is where you'll see that type of finish and you'll notice the best throwers in the world especially today's throwers have that foot down and they're just smashing the crap out of it and historically why non-reversing throwers always have that foot flat they just smash the finish and that's what sets up that big slinging throw and acceleration of the implement through delivery and that's critical to big throws so again hopefully you like today's video thanks for watching if you have any other questions or comments or things you'd like to see comment below if you like the video hit that thumbs up hit the subscribe button and we will see you on the next video be sure to check out our next videos be sure to subscribe visit our website for free videos click the links below we have links to our free mini course check out our websites for camps and different detailed information throw farther faster by understanding the science with the throwing chain reaction system thanks so much for watching